All right, guys, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here. I've got something that I am truly excited about today, and that is gonna be the brand new Radio Master Boxer. Now, if you've been following my channel for some time, you probably know that I have been through a ton of radios. I did the DX8 was my very first radio, then the Tyrannus X9D, then the QX7, then the Nirvana, then the Tango 2, the Mambo, the, uh, the TX16S and the Boxer. Now, will this take over as my primary radio or not? That is yet to be determined, but let's talk it out right here. So before we get into this, I want to make it clear up front that this radio was provided to me by Radio Master uh, for the purposes of this review. Now that does not color in any way the things that I'm going to be saying. I'm going to be giving you my good, my bad, who this radio is for, and Radio Master has no prior knowledge of what I'm going to say uh, or any control over it. You know, I'm going to I'm going to tell you what I think. All right. So now that that is out of the way, I want to just remind you that if you find this video helpful, please hit that like button, subscribe. I've got more content coming for you guys. I'm working really hard at keeping this regular again on the channel and I hope you guys appreciate it. So what comes in the box with the boxer? It comes in this nice carrying case. And I've got to say, Radio Master has some of the nicest carrying cases in the business. The touch and feel of the fabric on the outside of this is just, it, it's superb to say the least. Okay, a uh, little handle. Now, all that being said, am I gonna use it? Probably not, because I have like my FPV bag, which is what I carry all of my gear in. Um, it, which is unfortunate, because it is so nice. <sighs> I, I wish I had more use cases where I could get an everyday use out of this case. I, I, do, I love it. Okay, but we open up the case. Dun, 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 dun. And on the inside, you've got your radio and you have a gimbal protector. Dun, 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 dun. So you don't get a ton of accessories with the radio out of the box. It does not come with a battery. It ships with this 18650 uh, case that basically has a 2S balance plug that plugs into the back, or you can put a 2S battery into the battery bay. Okay, so let's talk about the specs and what sets the Boxer apart from the rest of the radios in the Radio Master lineup. Okay, so right off the bat, there's two versions. One is with Express LRS, one is with the four in one module. I believe it's the, let me, let me get my spec sheet. Let's get to this and let's just, let's hit all of the bullet points so that everybody is happy here. Available with built in Express LRS or the four in one CC 2500. Uh, multi-protocol module RF. Basically, you either get Express LRS on 2.4 gigahertz, or you get the four in one, which will do your Spectrum, your FR Sky, your Fly Sky. It, it does a bunch of different options. Uh, I personally have the four in one on my TX16S. I opted for that over Express LRS because the Express LRS on this bad boy was limited to 250 milliwatts. Well, guess what? This one goes up to a full one watt. So yes, the internal radio module is capable of one watt on 2.4 gigahertz and it will do the 1000 hertz mode or one kilohertz mode of Express LRS with no problems. So the two different versions of this radio are gonna come in at two different price points. The four in one option is only $99.99 for this radio, which makes it one of the best deals on the market right now. The Express LRS version is $139.99. Now, while that is a bit more, I feel like it is justified because the four in one module, you're gonna end up wanting to have a more modern RF link eventually. Maybe you got a bunch of FR Sky receivers, maybe you've got a bunch of Spectrum receivers and you don't wanna abandon that and I get it. However, you're gonna find yourself itching for something better and you're gonna end up dropping, you know, however much on an external module and that price is offset for me in getting the Express LRS module. Especially now that that Express LRS module comes in at a one watt output power. That really makes it a viable radio. I have no reason to run a different uh, Express LRS module in this guy other than the one that is in it. Unless I wanted 900 megahertz, I don't know. Um, features powerful STM32 VGT6. I don't know what that means. It's got a megabyte of RAM though. Comes with Edge TX pre-installed. The 
Radio Master TX16S was my first uh, experience with Edge TX and I've been loving it. I'm all the way up to the brand new 2.8 and uh, it's working great for me. <sighs> Edge TX could be its own uh, video so we're not gonna go too deep down that. We already mentioned the Express LRS is capable of a thousand hertz mode. Now that one watt is only going to be if you are in the US. If you are in the EU, they limit you to whatever that is. Uh, but you, you know what you're going to do. The four in one is only capable of the 20 dBm RF output, which is the EU limit of the Express LRS as well. Uh, QC 3.0 charging supports two amps. Honestly, I charged it one time when I got it uh, and I have not run it dead. That's the beauty of this thing. Is this battery life and we're going to get into that as we go on down there. Compact design, excellent ergonomics, can confirm. You'll see in the bench top uh, talk how nice it fits in my hand. Uh, new low profile uh, latching SE and SF. The, the SE and SF switches work a lot like on the Mambo. Uh, the left finger, it is a latching mechanism. The right, it is uh, a bounce back. However, my Mambo, my Mambo uh, is a bit sticky on this one. One of the things that I am the most excited about with the Boxer is the battery life. It has room for a 6200 milliamp hour battery in the back here. Now, this has not come standard. It's standard uh, issues with a 18650 case uh, that holds two 18650s, which will get you by if you got some of those, but I would highly recommend splurging for this 6200. If just for reference, my TX16S that I run over here, which has a touch screen that is driving, it's got the light up LEDs on the gimbals, um, an external module, uh, it only packs 5,000 milliamp hours. Uh, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it may or may not have been in focus. Uh, but it packs a 5,000 milliamp hour 2S. The Boxer, on the other hand, is packing 6,200 milliamp hours. That's like uh, 20 per plus percent more uh, capacity. Now, one of the cool features about this that I just realized, I didn't even catch this, it has an external module power slot in this battery cover. You see how it has little two areas that go up? What you want to do is if you're running an external module like a Crossfire or some other module that uh, will take uh, external power and go to a higher output, all you got to do is take that XT30 lead that comes off of this battery uh, that I got from Radio Master and slot it into there and you can close your battery cover with the wires there careful not to pinch them oh man okay got it and now i have my xt30 coming out the back ready to power the uh the external module so i do run express lrs on the majority of my stuff however i still have some stuff that i put crossfire on um some long range wings some long range quads uh different things like my four inch long range is on uh, Crossfire. My new seven inch long range is on Express LRS. I'm still testing Express LRS for long range. I do have more faith in my Crossfire setup just because I've been using it longer. I'm more familiar with it. I know what to expect out of it. Um, and I really appreciate the fact that it has that module. So now I can run my Crossfire module all the way up to two watts. Um, okay, other things. Internal fan to cool the Express LRS module. It has vents here on the back and vents on the top. The, uh, the RF module is placed inside like so and there are heat sinks and the fan blows across it and up and out. Now, it comes with the full size gimbals. These are the V4 Hall Effect gimbals from Radio Master. Now it is upgradable to the AG01s and if I do make this my daily driver, it is definitely getting AG01s thrown in there. Uh, no hesitation, that's happening. What else? Uh, standard JR module compartment, you've probably already seen that, pop it out. Um, you know, it'll take crossfire, etc. blah, blah, blah. The antenna that is on here is very stout. It is adjustable. Like I can bend it uh, forward. I could bend it to the side. I could orient it exactly how I want to, but it is also very sturdy uh, coax cable. The, uh, 
it's easy to get it screwed on and mounted and remove it. They do ship it, the radio, with a little blank cover to cover up your SMA adapter in case you're, you know, primarily using an external module, which is kind of nice. Uh, I've not seen the 4-in-1 module. I'm assuming that the 4-in-1 version is going to use the same external antenna adapter, which I wish that my TX-16S had just a blank because I almost never use the internal uh, RF on it unless I'm like just testing some random thing or I've got some old drone that I'm uh, running off of this guy. I like having a radio with a 4-in-1 somewhere in the house, but uh, it's not the part that I use the most. So I wish I just had a way to blank that out so I'm not worried about breaking off this antenna. Nice that that is an option if you are not using the internal RF module that is in the radio. And industry, for <laughs> they also have this nifty uh, fabric strap for your handle. Uh, I think that this is a really nice way to carry the radio. Uh, I. I'm gonna be honest, it's not my favorite part of the radio. If you, when you lay this guy down, it lays flat. If you are gonna have an external module, you're basically gonna be laying this radio down on that external module. However, the, uh, the mounting for this uh, strap, if you can see right here, the, uh, it is, you know, hardware. So it's a hardware mount. You can shorten it by just moving it over a couple of holes. Uh, you can, you could delete it really easily just by removing those screws. I'm hoping that there is an aftermarket, uh, kickstand available for this at some point. I'm sure that there will be, uh, get on it, get a 3d printer, print you up one. Uh, it, it, it's coming, but it comes with a fabric strap, which is okay for me for now. Now, they want you to know that these ergonomic grips that they have on the back, that these are exchangeable. And you're going to see later on in the video, I take the whole radio apart. You're going to see how easy they are to pop off and back on. I am looking forward to some other options, and we'll talk about why later on. Okay, now that you've got a full rundown of all the specs that this radio is bringing to the table, let's get it on the bench, go over the ergonomics of it, how it feels in your hands, and open it up and take a look at the internals. So this should give you a good idea of how the radio is going to fit in your hands. Now, uh, for me, I personally thumb my fingers, find the switches on the top, no problem. Uh, if you are more of a pincher, um, I... I think that the shoulder buttons as they are, are some of the easier buttons to actuate with your middle finger. Um, there are no momentary buttons on the back that are uh, odd to get a handle on, etc. cetera. Uh, front facing buttons. The rundown of what you have here. We have two position on the far left. I use that as part of my arming sequence. I have it set up so that I have to switch this down and then I put this button and either hitting this or this will safe the system. The reason that I do the to switch arming and I do it in Edge TX now, once was Open TX, is so that it works on every single system, whether it is Betaflight, iNav, uh, KISS, Flight One, PX4, RG Pilot, you name it, it's already done in the radio. Channel 5 does not go high until both of those uh, things are met. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time today talking about my personal setup on my radio. If you guys want a whole video with all of the little quirks and things that I do to make my radio my radio, I'd be more than happy to make that video. Just let me know in the comments if that's something that you'd like to see. Now, uh, moving over, we have a three position switch, dot, dot. We have two potentiometers. They feel nice and tactile. They got a little center detent, a good amount of resistance. Another three position at the SC and a two position on SD. Now these top buttons here, the one on the left is SE. It is a uh, two position switch. The one on the right is a momentary. It does not stay in, okay? Um, power button, everything else on the front of the radio is pretty straightforward. You have your six position switch that uh, Radio Master puts on everything. Uh, I still have yet to start using it for anything because it's hard to find when I'm under the goggles. I could see some things that I might configure on a radio uh, when not in the goggles. I, I, I don't know. I have not come up with a good use case for these buttons. Um, the, uh, let's see. 
system model, the normal uh, Radio Master navigation buttons. I'll let you watch somebody else's tutorial on how to navigate OpenTX, EdgeTX, etc. on one of these radios. It's really straightforward. On the back of the radio, you do have vents right here and vents at the top for the internal fan for cooling of the Express LRS module. Let's see just how loud that fan is. Dang, buddy. Look at them switches. Zero milliwatts. Well, the fan is definitely running, but it is super quiet. And honestly, with that beefy of a heat sink and a fan to cool it and all that room in there and air, I don't think that you're going to have any issues in terms of overheating with this guy. I'm trying to see if I can even feel the airflow. Oh yeah, I can't feel it. Just a little bit right there. What else? Uh, it has a handy dandy um, fabric strap on the back. Power it down and do the dirty. I want to take it apart and take a look at the insides. I don't actually need to take this radio apart right now because all of the access for adjusting the spring tensions, the, uh, the, you know, centering, changing the, mo I don't know if you can do the modes, but a lot of the controls for these gimbals are right here on the faceplate. You got to screw here, screw here. I don't remember what they all do, so I'm not going to uh, speak to that, but most of your controls for the gimbals are right here on the front. But I want to know how hard it is going to be to replace these switches. I want to know what the layout of the internals are. I am just a curious individual. So uh, if you are ever working on your radio, you always want to protect the front of the radio when you flip it over on the table. I am going to rely on these gimbal protectors. They, uh, they feel like, I think, what is that material called? I think it's SLS. It's like the, um, uh, it's not the extruded, it's like the lasers and the liquid, and I'm not a 3D printing expert, but they feel very nice, these gimbal protectors, and I am a big fan. Okay, so the first thing you always wanna do is take your battery out. All right, okay. You have to take off the grips here. They come off really easily. You got a little nub right there. Uh, just pull it back. I have peeled them back to take a look. I hadn't actually taken it all the way off. Oh, that's neat. It fits into a little cavity on the side here and then the grips pull in. It is very securely held. Look at me, I'm already screwing up. Okay. Now that gets us access to all of our bolts. I'm assuming it's gonna be a 1.5. Maybe not. Let's try the two mil. I hope it's not a hex or God forbid a Phillips. Oh my goodness. I think it is a Phillips head. Ugh. Yep. Okay. Well, you know, machine screws. I'm sure that they are plastic on plastic. Oh, I don't think that's a screw there. What are we looking at? Nope, those are, so these two four are actually part of uh, what holds the covers on. Don't stick your screwdriver in there. Hopefully, especially if it's powered on, you'll, you might short something out. Aha, uh -huh. there's the QR code sticker on the bottom that is holding it together. Ta-da. Now, 
Yep, there is literally nothing on the other side of this. I don't want to even flip it over though because it's just the screws. Uh, well, I'm going to put my fingers on all the pieces. There you go. Oh my gosh, and I dropped one. Still. <laughs> Smooth. And we can see how easy it's going to be to replace the gimbals on this guy. Uh, it looks like one, two, three, four screws and gimbal is loose. Should be very similar to the other uh, Radio Master radios because of the, um, yeah, it, it, the same gimbals fit in this that fit in the TX16S. If you look here, all of your switches are... Uh, straight connectors. So if you were to break off one of your switches, you should be able to just order that and replace it. The um, two position and momentary switches, the mechanism is all I'm trying to see if that I can't tell if that is hard mounted or uh, just soldered onto this PCB. I presume that that is replaceable in some way. I am not going to take the main board out to uh, break it down any further, but you can see our Express LRS module here. Um, you know, an interesting thing, I, I like how sturdy this SMA adapter is, but if you were so inclined, I am willing to bet that you could replace this big beefy antenna that's on the outside with a Moxon or a dipole that sits on the internal uh, inside of the radio. And are you going to get as much range? No. Are you going to get an acceptable amount of range? I would be willing to bet that you would. Um, and then you don't ever have to take this... Uh, this antenna off. It might be something worth considering. All right, those are your potentiometers there. Uh, yeah, very straightforward. We have the LED connectors on the PCB. So if you were to get the uh, AGO ones and you wanted to put the LED uh, rings around your gimbals, you absolutely could. On mine, I don't think that I'm going to do that again. That's my one downside with the TX16S is how fast that battery drains. And I'm just going to be conservative on this guy and not add anything that is sucking the battery down. We've got our vibration motor down here. Um, BLE, Bluetooth LE. Hmm. I mean, it looks pretty straightforward. Everything, all of the wire runs are cleaned up. They're tacked down. All right, let's put it back together. It fits in nicely. When putting the grips back on, it seems like the best practice is going to be to get it in on that leading edge. And once it's nice and smooth across, pull it over and just work all of the pieces back into place. Yeah, easy peasy. still turns on just fine. So how does the Boxer compare to other radios that have recently been my go-to daily driver? Well, the closest comparison is clearly going to be the TBS Mambo, okay? Now, in terms of the ergonomics, they are nearly identical. Let me just hold these guys up to the camera. I don't think, it, I wish I'd done this on the tabletop. You can't even tell that there is a radio behind it. They line up almost perfectly. The, the feel in the hand, if I were to, if you were to hand them to me and I was blindfolded, I'll be honest, I can tell a difference. The, uh, the Mambo is a little bit thicker in the, in terms of the case. Um, 
than the uh, than the boxer. Let me see this again. Yeah, it is definitely thicker. The uh, I feel like the touch points in terms of this. Okay, the switches on the front they're the same. Other than the fact that the outside switches on the boxer are two position and the outsides, all the four of the front facing switches on the Mambo are three position. I do like that a little bit better. I'm not gonna lie, but I'm pretty sure you could actually change these to three position switches. No problem. I could probably even steal them out of the Mambo. Uh, the, let's see, uh, trims. I like the controls of navigating uh, Edge TX with the four button. I've, I guess I've just gotten used to it. I was going through some of the menus on the Mambo recently, uh, just for comparison purposes for this video, and I was finding it clumsy to navigate that radio, uh, which is odd, because I've I used the Tango 2 and the Mambo for so long. But now, it the Radio Master button layout has just become second nature to me. Eh, take that for what it's worth. I think you get used to what you have. Ergonomically speaking, the comparison between the Mambo and the Boxer are very, very close. The one place where I would really give the edge to the Mambo um, is going to be in these back nubs here. Those just feel so good in the hand. I am somebody that doesn't use a lanyard when I am walking around with my radio. It is in my hand. And this radio, my, my middle finger finds its spot right there on the nub which is big and beefy. My thumb on the front when I'm one-handed finds the inside of the gimbal here. And this radio is solidly in my hand. I never felt like I was about to drop it. To be fair, I never felt like I was about to drop the TX-16S either. This guy has also that nice big nub on the backside. I do the same grip with this guy. I grab the nub, put my thumb on the inside of the gimbal, and I have a solid grip carrying it around. Uh, when it comes to the boxer, there's no big nub near the top, and I find myself missing that just a little bit. If I had to ding it in any place for the ergonomics, that's gonna be it. Uh, now, that being said, when I go to walk around, I still have a good grip. The uh, the two finger. Now, I know I'm talking a lot about how it feels holding it when you're walking, which may seem odd, but it really does translate to when I get the grip on this guy, my hands are locked in. I'm not moving, right? Same thing for the TX-16S. I get my, get my grip on here and you can see that I have those middle fingers locked. The rest of the hand is wrapped around. Uh, I feel secure with the Boxer. I've been flying it quite a bit, done a lot of tuning with it, done uh, quite a few flights around the house. Uh, with the Boxer, when I get locked in, I feel just as locked in, but when I start thinking about it, there are certain touch points on these other two radios that I do like better, primarily on the back of the radio. Now, I, when I first opened up the Boxer, I was, like, man, I love these ergonomics, but I wish the touch points were nicer. I missed my metal faceplate from the TX-16S. I missed the AG-01 gimbals. Uh, the, you know, you got your leather uh, side pads here. The touch points on the TX-16S are premium, but this is a premium radio. You are gonna pr pay a pretty penny. I think if I were to spec this radio out, it's about $500 versus the bottom uh, entry level of this one at 99 or 139 with Express LRS. I know you're saying, wait, $500? Yes. The Max with the metal faceplate, whether you get the Min Chen Kim edition, the Lumineer edition, I don't know who else has the metal faceplate. Um, there is not an official 4-cell stingy blacked out TX-16S radio. I do love that. <laughs> Thank you, Radio Master. But yeah, there's a huge difference in price between a $550 radio and a $140 radio. With that being said, upgrading this guy with the AG-01 gimbals, man, it's gonna come freaking close to this radio. And after living with it for a while, this plastic 
I know I'm saying this and it's crazy, but the plastic on it is actually really nice. It has a kind of satiny, velvety feel to it. Um, in comparison to the Mambo or the Tango 2, these feel cheap plastic, almost toy-like. Uh, sorry, TBS, the plastics that you use, it, it, they're not the best. However, the plastic on this, it's, it's a more supple feel. I would say. Uh, it's still plastic at the end of the day. It's not top tier. If if I can get myself a uh, a boxer with a metal faceplate, AGO1 gimbals, and metal all metal buttons, just like the TX16S, man, I'm pretty sold on it. I'm pretty sold on it. I'm not gonna lie. Now, the one other thing that I wanna mention that is a really nice feature on the Mambo that I wish we had on the Boxer is the ability to have that internal antenna that I talked about before. Um, now, I know that I have, I'm thinking about possibly modifying this to have its own internal antenna as the only option, but with the Mambo, it comes with the internal antenna, you can add the external, and then you can switch back and forth between them. That is a really nice feature and uh, maybe the next version of this guy. But you know, I just have to be honest with you guys and let you know the things I like, the things I don't like. I do really like this radio a lot though. I don't wanna, uh, I don't want to dilute that fact. Uh, we're getting close to the end. Holy cow, I've been talking for 30 minutes. So much for doing this in 15. So that brings us to the final point and that is who is this radio for? Is this radio for somebody that has a TX-16S? Unless you are not liking your TX-16S, I would say no. The biggest upside for me of the Boxer over the TX-16S is that battery life. The Boxer states 20 hours of battery life with that 6200 milliamp hour battery. I have yet to run it dead yet. And so I tend to believe that. Whereas my TX16S with the touch screen, if I've got that brightness cranked up and I got my LED gimbals running uh, and my external module, I can easily run that down in one day's worth of flying. Uh, and if, if I'm turning it on and off and I'm not flying a bunch, sure, it lasts multiple days, but I'm always worried a little bit about my radio and I always make sure that I have some type of adapter, whether it's my battery checker, my speedy B, that is gonna be able to let me use my LiPos to charge USB devices so that I can charge it in the field in a bind. Now, I don't have to do that a ton, but it is something that comes up. One, on the note of charging, et cetera, I do wanna note the Radio Master radios have the USB port for charging on the bottom and the USB port for data and simulator and et cetera on the top. Now on my TX16S, it has little covers, which so far they, they work good. They always go back into place, but I always feel like they're gonna get popped out and not wanna sit back down. I, I kind of like it just being out there and in the open. Now, maybe you've been burnt before with getting dust in USB ports, but uh, it's another thing that's out there. So I don't think that it's necessarily a radio for somebody that has a top tier radio. Uh, I wouldn't feel compelled to switch to it in order to get like the best of the best. Now, if you need a beater radio, if you want a workhorse radio and you don't want to smash up your nice radio at the Bando, this guy is awesome. If you're just starting out, uh, I have been recommending the Zorro to a lot of people that are getting into the hobby for the past few months. Now I'm basically going to be telling people either get the Zorro or the Boxer, depending on what form factor you like. You want a gamepad style controller, get the Zorro. You want a more full sized radio, but not giant, get the Boxer. If you want to go all out and get the blingy, get the TX16S. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're just different style radios. I think for me, I am gonna experiment with the Boxer as my daily driver for a little while. Cause to be honest, I don't do a ton of programming on my FPV quads. The TX16S is gonna have its place with fixed wing for forever because of all the programmability options, the telemetry screens on that big, nice touch screen. Uh, but I think that this radio is all I need for my freestyle quads and I can fly for like a whole freaking weekend without having to charge the thing. So man, I need to get some AGO ones for it though. 
and make it just feel a little nicer. Give me a metal faceplate, Radio Master. That's all I'm asking for. Well, metal buttons too, but we can start with the metal faceplate, okay? <laughs> All right, well, if you're still here, uh, you've made it to the end of the video. I know this was a long one, but there's a lot to talk about with this radio, and I have strong opinions about hand controllers, and I just wanted to get all of those out there. I hope that you appreciate it. If you did, hit that like button. Make sure you got the bell turned on, because I've got more stuff coming for you guys. And until then, stay safe, go fly, have fun, and enjoy yourself. We'll see you next time. Oh my gosh, I'm just recording away. So much wasted data. Okay, but I did verify that.